G'day guys, welcome back to J-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video about a very overweight woman going on a date and complaining why she doesn't have much luck in the dating market. And I thought this was a very telling video due to the fact that I'm sure a lot of you dirty monster hunters out there have been on dates like this. Um, you've matched with a girl on a dating app and you've thought, yeah, maybe she's looking a bit chunkier. She hasn't shared all the photos of her body. She's done the, ice, the iceberg photos of just the head on a certain angle. You know, the ones I'm talking about. And then when you get to the date, this thing waddles up the road and gives you a whole bunch of attitude. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I started gaining weight when I was like two. Oh, At yeah. 25, I was about 550 pounds. I'm about to go on my blind date. I'm so nervous. Dating is hard because men, they're just kind of like trash. Oh, Being big and beautiful, I just feel like I am fetishized. I'm a goal, like I'm a conqueror. Fuck, man, you dirty, dirty Steve-O's out there. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. She thinks that she's a hot number, a big fetish, you know, for you guys to put in the back of your VNs. Actually, it's going to have to be in the back of a Ford Raptor. I really don't think this one here is going to fit in the back of the VN, unfortunately. So that rules me out, guys. I was thinking about it, but it's not me for this time. I'm going to have to leave it to you, Steve-O's and the Ford Raptors. I don't want to have to question myself anymore in my relationship. I don't want to have to be insecure in my relationship anymore. Have you ever dated a plus size woman? Oh, what do I say here? Um, no. Was it their weight that stopped it, or just you guys just weren't compatible? Um, what we. Uh... So my look is like, I don't know. I'm very chic, and it's cute, and it's comfy, and I don't have to worry. Yeah, I don't know about that. I know chic, cute, and comfy guys, but she's not doing herself any favors. It's like these bigger, bigger ladies. And hey, I know some people are overweight and all that sort of thing, but it is something that I can be critical of at times because it is something that can be changed if you do look after yourself. Um, people will say, yeah, I've got thyroid and all this. Uh, this is a girl I used to know, and she put on a bit of weight. And she goes, yeah, it's my thyroid acting up. But she used to love Krispy Kremes, and she'll be smashing a fucking box of Krispy Kremes. Oh, my, 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 oh it's my thyroid. It's not what I'm eating. <laughs> you know, she's covered in tats, tats on the chest. Um, she's not helping herself out. You know, she's 700 kilos and she's wearing that outfit. You know, even at the best of times, a, a, a girl with a normal physique wearing this outfit, you'd be like, what are you doing? Worry about tugging anything all day. My name is Nina. I'm from Look Philadelphia. That. I'm hey, that's, that's a, that is a carjack job, guys. I sort of call a carjack job. Where you got to put them up and you got to push the fooper up so you can get in there. You guys, you, you, you dirty steve know what I'm talking about at home. 35 years old and I'm a full-time makeup artist. My mom said I started gaining weight when I was like two. I was 300 pounds by the time I was about 12, 13. I think I graduated high school around almost 400 pounds. By 25, I was about 550 pounds. I want to find love now because I feel like I know it's going to be real. You loved me then, and it's just like, let's ride off into the sunset with my, you know, my BBL and my, <laughs> my flat stomach. This is, it. this is the exact thing, like, always comment on. Like, these women live in fantasy land, and not even because she's a bigger girl, right? It's more the fact that they believe in this fairy tale. You know, Mr. Mr. Prince Charming, Mr. Grey, James Bond, he's just waiting around the corner. He's going to come around the corner. He's going to sweep her off her feet, and they're going to go off into the sunset, and it's going to be this happy, exciting mysterious sexy thing forever and then we know that guys we know that that can't last but it's what they're looking for and they're not going to settle for less and you know even even in the worst case scenario she's a 35 year old chick um and she still has standards very high and and not to say that you know, she's probably what 200 kilos in weight covered in tats Covered in even her face there, she looks like she's got a bit of Botox going on. So, you know, not, not doing herself any favors, guys. Dating is hard because I think men, they're just kind of like trash. Whoa, cop that. When you see a fat person, you automatically think they are lazy, they stink. I go to the gym three, four times a week. I don't eat sugar. I don't, you know, I don't drink soda. I don't drink juice. I don't go to fast food. My type aesthetically, um, I like a beard, I like full lips. I like a mysterious guy, but a confident guy. In a perfect That's you guys, don't tell me. Put in the comments, guys, if you've ever been catfished on a date, you've been, 
you've been sitting there waiting for him to come in and you see this sort of chick walk up and you're just thinking to yourself, oh, please don't be her. Please don't be her. Up she comes, she waddles up, you know. And you're like, she goes, oh, G-Man. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, you're like, inside, you're like, fuck. <laughs> you still do it anyway, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect world. I would meet him and he would be my type and I would be his type. I'm ready for my blind date. My name is Matthew. I'm 41 years old. I'm from the greater Philadelphia area. I know absolutely nothing about my date. Uh, this is a blind date. So oh, um, I will be surprised uh, anyway. He's going to be surprised, all right. Hi. He's like, oh, what have you done to me? Absolute stitch up. Absolute stitch up. My name is Nina. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, okay. I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> I'm always nervous on a date. So how old are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm gonna say how old are you? Oh, um, well, I'm good, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 41. Okay, I'm 35. Okay. So what do you do for a living? Um, I work for a court. Nothing exciting. Nothing exciting? No. So would you do anything out of work? Um, sadly, no, not really. I, no passion, no nothing? Oh, really, no. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a gamer. Oh. Yeah, man, he loves his COD, this bloke. He loves getting on the games with the boys. And unfortunately, these kind of guys who love the game, um, women don't like it when you game. So when you get a you get a message, you think they're going to like it when you're sitting at home for six hours with your headset on, playing Call of Duty or playing Warzone or whatever it is with the boys doing 10, 1080 fucking no scope headshots. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So this guy, um, hey, he, he thinks, oh yeah, I'm going to go get a date. You know, I'm going to tell her I'm a gamer up front early. You know, so she knows. Yeah, buddy, you won't be gaming anymore. Yeah, I feel like that's like a like a stress reliever. Um, I don't know nothing about games at all. Um, I just know that guys like to play them. Yeah, I, I used to be in the music. Um, that's passion. Yeah, well, used to. I came a certain age and I kind of, you know, focused on more, I don't know, serious things. Um, that's something you can still do. See, I'm a, I'm a realist. You know, I'm a realist. I can't, you know, I'm not You're a, not a dreamer. <laughs> I'm a really is on a dreamer. He's on this diet. Dreamer within a reason. I, I can't live in your files. A dreamer with the reality yeah, sense. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay, you know what? You can't be 40 something trying to compete with these younger people. So like, when I say I understand, that. meaning I'm that person, like, you know, like the 41 year old rapper. You know, I, I'm an influencer on social media, but it wasn't because I tried to. It was just because I just influenced because of my size, because of the way that I dress. And I've always been like, not loud, but like, if I'm not loud, my outfit's loud. If I'm not loud, my hair, or my makeup, <laughs> or my tattoos, and I don't know, like, I guess I just get attention, even if I didn't. Attention seeking. Like, there are guys, like, on Instagram that just be loving this, be right up in their Instagram going, oh, you're so hot, you're so beautiful, oh, I want to marry you. It, it's just, it, it's astounding to me that someone um, with this presentation um, can be so confident. I mean, there's nothing wrong with people being confident, but it's just a misguided sense of confidence. People are going to be like, oh, no, you've been an asshole just because she's fat. No, she's she's big, but she's very, very overly confident for how she's presenting herself to the world um, and is probably wondering why she can't get a boyfriend. All right? I, I can't understand that. And, and another thing too, when women say they're loud or their outfits are loud or they've got a big personality, we all know what that means. That means... I'm a bitch. I want it. It just happens. My family loved me so much that I actually never really felt the hate until I left the house. My family always like told me how beautiful I was, and I was just normal, I guess. And um, you know, I'm guessing being three. This is the outcome of that when people tell you comforting lies, you start walking through life like you don't actually believe them. Like just the absolute delusion here. 300 pounds at like 13 wasn't probably the normal, but my family loved me so much I really didn't pay attention. I was delusionally confident because it's the only way that I could actually get through life. You do not have to be big to go through things in life. Like when they see a fat person like sad outside, they're like, oh, she's probably sad because she's sad. I'm like, I just had a bad <laughs> Sorry. I just had so hang on. So she wants to start this date by saying, I don't want to be defined by my size, yada, yada, yada. The whole time she has made it about her size. She has made it about her own insecurities. And this guy's just sitting there going, Fuck. I reckon he's gonna do it though to me. He looks like he's a bit of um a bit of an undercover Steve O.
He's like, I'm going to come across as a bit of a nerdy geek, nice guy for the show, but really he's got a little sex dungeon at home. He's going to put her up on the sex swings in there. That is my tip. I had a bad day. Like, I wasn't even actually thinking about my weight right now, but damn. Like, but I feel like when you see sad, fat people, it's like, you assume oh, that's what they said. Poor thing. She probably just wants to lose weight. Like, no, you do. Leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, she doesn't want to be fat. Yeah, no, nah, you want to lose weight. No, you don't want to be skinny because skinny people are, nah. And if men don't like me, men are trash if they don't want to embrace my curvy girl. <laughs> you can't make it up. All right, guys, halfway through the show. Um, please sub to the channel if you haven't so far. Aiming for 8K subscribers. And uh, the best thing you can do, guys, is watch the video through to the end as that really helps me out, gets me out to a wider audience. And if you're interested, please check out the Patreon if you want to further support the channel. Can I go to the bathroom real quick? Uh, certainly. Okay. I'll be here. Oh, just hit in the face. I think the thing is going good. I think he's a little nervous. So um, I guess that's kind of like knocking my nerves out of it. Am I attracted to Matthew? Mm, he's a little different from my type. Um, I think he's handsome. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. How, how can you sit there and say you've got a type when... You're literally a minus 16 out of 10. Like, it, it just beggars belief. Do you think there'll be guys out there that'll be in her equivalent size? Do you think she would go out with a guy her size, her equivalent? No way. She wouldn't touch him. Like, she probably wants some thick guy and a guy with a beard and big full lips or whatever she said. It's just complete delusion. Do you think as well that if they had the equivalent of her, a, a big sort of fat guy, that he'll be able to get a date and be on a dating show and have anyone even sit there with him? Wouldn't happen. <laughs> Would not happen. So, I have a question because I always ask this. Have you ever dated a plus size woman? Come on. Um, now no. you have. No, so, yeah. I've now, so, I mean, I, I have been on dates mm -hmm. um, with, with plus size women, but I have never, like. Oh, got into a relationship yes, with them. Okay, 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 yes. okay. He's banged the ass off him. He's uh, just been smashing them up. He's rolling them around in the flower, as they say, to find the wet spot. <laughs> But you have been on dates with them? Yes. Was it their weight that stopped it, or just you guys just weren't compatible? Um, I think we weren't compatible. You weren't compatible? Um, yeah, no. Yeah. No, I get that. I but get that. I, I feel like that when I meet that person who gets me, I'll know it. And that's what yeah. I'm waiting for. Yeah, like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like if you're a little jaded, you're not going to, like, allow somebody to get to know you. You gotta love these comments as, as well. When I was back out dating guys and going on dates with women, they would always try and, like, psychoanalyze me. So if you, ever, if you tell them even one little bit about your past or you might have had a bad experience, then they sit there trying to psychoanalyze you and pull you apart on the date, not realizing how just uncomfortable and rude and just really obnoxious that that is. That was a frequent occurrence for me. Guys, if you've had that, I'm sure you would have. You would have said, oh, yeah, no, I've gone through a, gone through a separation or a divorce, and you might say something and overshare or something like that. We all do it at the best of times. And then someone's going to turn around and... You know, start making obnoxious comments at the surface level, thinking they actually know you and trying to peel the layers off you like an onion. Yeah, very, very common and very, very annoying. And I don't know if women even know they're doing it or not. I think maybe it's just the way they are, trying to find information and, and pick you to pieces on dates. So you probably don't even know you're doing it. I'm just saying, though, I feel well, like... I'm a, I'm a very private person. Um, and, you know, I don't feel that... Uh, most people would like deserve to fully know me. Some people are so guarded that they even jump in relationships with people and truly won't expose who they truly are, but then get mad when the relationship doesn't work. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, it's not going to work because I, you're not telling me who you are. Right. So I can't understand you if I don't know who fully, you are. Yeah, right. For the person fully reveals himself. I am an open book for the most part. I am. I have a lot of different sides of me and not all, not all of it's on Instagram. But most of it, I'm pretty, I'm an open, I'm an open book. Well, so I'm not trying to change the subject, but as a plus size woman, do you, have you had struggles with dating? Have I been on dates? Yes, but I feel like for me, I've never been on that like traditional, like the man picks you up, he like sets the whole date, he has like the movie, the dinner. I think the biggest thing is like, uh, I mean, that did you say, I used to do those things when I was younger, but I never did them when I was in my 30s. I used to do those things when I was like, you know, late teens, early 20s. When I was a young guy, I didn't know any better. You know, I used to go and turn up there with a the heart shape, you know, um, 
a box of chocolates and the flowers at the door and you know not not like you guys know what i mean not exact thing you know but rocking up like you've seen in the movies because you've been trained by movies and when you go out there and you're with more and more women or you get more experienced with women or you've been through relationships that might not have ended great you look back and you go why did i do all those things because i really didn't get much out of it or much appreciation it was just an expectation so i've gone and put all this effort in and it's all been thrown back in my face at some point but I think it's I think it's really interesting that the women are still thinking, especially in your thirties, mid thirties, that men are going to treat you that way. They're going to roll up to your door. They're going to come and pick you up and come and you know, say speak to your dad and shake your dad's hand and take you out on a date. It, it, maybe if you're a really attractive twenty year old, that might still happen. I, I just can't see it happening. I haven't heard of guys doing that. Um, I think a lot of the stuff now, a lot of people are sick of spending money. Um, dating's about. I call it fast dating. You know how like there's fast fashion with clothes that don't last very long? It's fast dating. Most of these interactions don't last very long. So why are guys going to come and pick you up and take you out to restaurants and stuff like that? And yeah, there's heaps of simps and, and dudes who know no better that still do that shit. But I think a lot of more and more guys are actually waking up that it's the biggest waste of money for really low return on investment. And that's why they're going for the walking dates, the catch-up dates, the inviting chicks straight over to your house, whatever the Bryson and Steve-O do. Instead of rolling up with the you know, like um, Alfalfa out of um, what's it? It's the Sandlot Kids, and he's got a spike on his head, and he's got, Darla, and he's got his little thing, and he's singing the song and everything, and that's what they that's what they expect. And I think those days are gone. I think men are waking up. Not being a fetish, especially when I was 550 pounds. Like I knew at that point it was literally just sex. Like literally, it was just guys coming to my mom's oh. house to have sex with me. We never went out. Like. I'm linking up and I'm drunk and, you know, you're coming over and we're having sex. We're never going out with each other. I really want He's just like, oh, man, she's just been ran through by a thousand Steve-O's. But I still think he's down for it. I think he's trying to He's trying to be... He's, I wonder what he's even thinking right now. That's probably the worst thing you can say to a guy is talk about your sexual history on a date or even your dating history. I know women, for whatever reason, they like to do that, like talk about their past. Um, and even sometimes if you're a friend with benefits or something like that, they want to tell you all about how they're rooting all these other dudes and the stuff that they did. I'm just like, why are you telling me this shit? So he's sitting there like, oh my God, he's just picturing the miles of schlong that have gone through. She's at mum's house in, the, in in one of the spare bedrooms. Guys are just coming through, railing it, walking out, dropping loads. Classic. I want that fairy tale. I want that like the man that comes in and like, you know, the stuff that I can't figure out, he figures it out for me. That person I could like take on life with, like, Everything that happens in my life, I want him to be like right by my side. I don't want to have to question myself anymore in my relationship. I don't want to have to be insecure in my relationship anymore. Okay, wow. Yeah. Look, if you really want that, you're going to have to put the work in. And you guys can flame me for saying I'm an asshole. But she needs to lose like 200 kilos to even be in, 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 in the running, to even consider even thinking about finding a man like that. But and getting towards 35 as well, like... The, the, the time's running out for you for those really high value kind of guys they either have got a woman in your age bracket they're married have families or they're dating a lot of the time women maybe mid to late 20s not 35 year olds so she might, she might need to just set the expectations as just taking anyone who'll have her because I just can't see this happening for her and I know there are some of you dirty guys at home you know who I'm talking about I'm talking to you you go there, you find her on plenty of fish. You tell her how hot she is. You tell her how sexy she is. You go over there, you get the car jacks out. You do what you got to do. You gas her head up. You, you're creating this. Yeah, shit, shed some light on some things that I didn't, you know, I didn't know or understand. So wow. A lot of people don't. And I think some people don't live in that world. Some people see me and think nothing. I'm just another norm, normal human being. But for one of you, it's a thousand that do. Like, of course, you know, I, I do have a big personality, but also oh, with right. that being said, like with social media is like they get it 24 seven and then people meet me and they're like, oh, like, you're pretty calm. And I'm like, I'm not big, sexy 24 seven. Like I'm Nina. Like, right. Is your social media, is your um like your podcast, like is that like your primary, like, you know, like job? No. It's like these Instagram and you know, people think that these are real people. But it's all a fake persona. Everything's fake, curated. Whether she's a big fat chick and she's got her BBW guys, the guys with the B, B, BW, BB, hang on, what's it? BBCs. You boys out there with your BBCs, 
he loved these kind of chicks, you know, on her Instagram, telling her how hot she is and all that, not realizing that what you're seeing is not what you're getting. It's all an act, you know. She's trying to generate revenue off there. No, I'm a full time makeup artist. Okay. Oh yeah, let me just talk. I'm a full time makeup artist. Okay. But I was always like the fashionista. In He's my gonna be me, And it just trickled into like doing their makeup, and then it just kind of snowballed because um, when I moved back to Philly, I started doing social media more. I started doing more with fashion and makeup, and it just snowballed. It's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. My work and my personality, everything kind of all ties into why I think I'm so successful at this. I reckon he's going to do a second date. I reckon he's going to do it. I reckon he's like, ooh, because she said she was talking about guys coming over her mum's and pounding her. He probably might not be getting a lot of action, Steve-O here. I reckon he's like, I'm going to give it a go because she's sort of given away that she likes to go spread eagle. I'm getting in there. What do you guys think? Well, Nina, I had, a, I had a really great time. I really did have a good time. I enjoyed meeting you. Good me. conversation. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. Let's go. I think the date went well. Um, I like that even if it doesn't go past this, I think I opened him up to like things that he never knew, never thought about. Oh, yeah. Overall, I think it went well. Um, I, I was comfortable. Um, we had good conversation. Do you guys think you'll see each other? He's just like, no. I would be down to go out to dinner again. I think you're a good conversationalist. Um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was good, good company. Can't pass up a good company and a bite. I have broken so bite. many Should barriers being my size. It's hard. They don't even hold hands. They don't even hold hands. So I reckon now he's going to do a Jason Bourne after this date. He said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I think, oh, I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, mm, never seen again. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's the end of the clip. Thank you very much for watching this far. Uh, if you did make it, it's greatly appreciated. I'll see you in the next one.